We continue now at the top of Daf Mem Chesam and Aleph and Maseches Nedarim. This is Nedarim Daf 48a. The mission here is discussing a situation of two people that are mudr hana from one another. They cannot get benefit from one another. So it says that if you have things that are shel ole bavel, which we're going to explain in a moment, those things are public property that's considered like hefker, so that they're allowed to use. That's not considered a violation of the neder. Vasurim bedavr shel osahair, but they're prohibited to use something that is public but part of the city. Now the Ran over here explains Vasurin Bedavar Shalosa Ir Shahim Darimba, meaning the city that they are living in, there they can't use that public property. Because when it comes to the the property of the city that's public for the city, it still really belongs to the people of the city in the sense that people from another city cannot really use it. They don't have a portion of that public property. Because even the people who handle the finances, the business of the city, which is the Zion the seven people who are appointed to that position in the city, they're like partners over there, they prohibit one another. So in other words, if you have public area that's part of the city, that's considered like everyone is a partner, and if you have two people in the city that are mudr hana from one another, they won't be able to use that public property, but if it's public in the more national sense, so then it's considered to be like Hefker, it's not a problem to go into those areas. The mission here continues, what do we mean by things of Ole Bavel, things of those who came up from Bavel? Again, those are like the national public property. You could go in Har Habayis, for example, the Temple Mount, Vahazoros, and the courtyards over there. Vahabor Sheba Em Tzahaderach. Let's say also you have a pit, which is like a cistern filled with water in the middle of the road. Those are all considered areas that are essentially Hefker and not a problem. Ve'eza Udavr Shal Osahir. And what are considered things that are public property but within a city which are problematic? Kigon Harachava, that would be, for example, the street of a city, Vahamerchatz, or the bathhouse, Uve Saknesis, or the synagogue, Vahateva, Vahasvarim, and let's say you have the Aron where they. The Teva, the Ran says, is the area which you put the Sefer Torah on, like what we would call the Bima. Vasfar means the Sifre Torah themselves, all of those things. So those are going to be areas that are public within the city, and that is going to be a problem. And the Ran over here says, Vateva Shenosnin Oleh, Sefer Torah Likros. Again, the Ran understands the Teva is the place where they put the Sefer on top of it in order to read from. Vasfarim Shekorin Bahen. And the Svarim again refers to the Sifre Torah that they read from. There are others who say the Teva refers to what we call the Aron, which is the area where the Sefer Torah is housed. And the Mishnah continues, If somebody writes over his portion to the Nasi, now the Ran over here explains, This is going to be explained, this line in the Mishnah will be explained in the Gemara, that it means to say as follows, What can you do to fix this situation? Areas where they can't go, let's say, that are public within the city and they want to go to them, what should they do? So, so they can write over their portion in that property and say they're giving it over to the Nasi, to the president, to Bahachi Shari, then it becomes permitted, it's no longer theirs. Kinnitanan, like we learned, no sin la'achar mishum matana, if you give it to somebody else as a matana, as a gift, v'halo mutter ba, so then the other person becomes mutter, it's no longer considered that person's property, and therefore it's not a problem by a mudr hana. And the Mishnah continues, Rabbi Yehuda, Omer Rabbi Yehuda says, Echad kosev l'nasi, v'echad kosev l'hadir. It doesn't matter if the person writes it over to the nasi, or if you, even if you write it over to anyone, that would be a solution. Ma'abin kosev l'nasi, l'kosev l'hadir. Now what's the difference between writing it over to the nasi, or writing it over to just a regular person? Sha kosev l'nasi, ain't zarech l'zakos. Because if you write it over to the nasi, there's no need for the there's no need for anyone to make a formal kenyan. But l'hadir, but if it's written over to a hadir, to a regular person, so then you need a formal Kenyan. The Mefarish over here says, You don't have to have somebody else pick it up, make a formal Kenyan on it, or pick up something else. Let's say you do like a Kenyan Suder. You don't have to have that. But if you write it over to a regular person, you're going to need some kind of a formal Kenyan. In this way, so the, the strength of the Nazi is greater than the strength of the Hedyot, than the strength of the regular person.
And the Mishnah continues, Vachachomim Omrim and the Chachomim say, Echot Zevi Echot Zevi, it doesn't matter if it's Kosev Lenasi or Kosev Lehedyon. In both cases, Tzrich and Lezakos, there is a requirement, there's a need for a formal Kinyan, Lodibro Benasi Ela Behova. They only spoke about a Nasi because that was the normal, that was the traditional thing to do, to write it over to the Nasi, a way of giving covet to the Nasi, but it could really be to anyone and it is the same. And the Mishnah continues, Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Rabbi Yehuda says, Ein Anshe Galil Tzrichen Lichdov, the people of Galil, they don't need to write it over. Shekvar Kosuav was saying Al Yedain, because this was already done by their fathers. It's already been written over and therefore it is not a problem. And the Gemara says, Am I mitzvah? So if you write it over to the Nasi, why is it prohibited? Right now, the Gemara thinks in that line when the Mishnah talked about writing it over to the Nasi, that was including writing over to the Nasi in the list of areas which is prohibited. So the Gemara is asking, why should it be prohibited? On the contrary, if it's written over to the Nasi, so there is no more portion. The, the people who are Mudr enough from one another no longer have a portion it shouldn't be a problem and the Gemara answers like the Ran already said Omer Rav Sheishas Rav Sheishas says Hachi Katani this is what the Mishnah means Umat HaKonosan what is the solution in order to make this area, these areas permitted for these two people who are Mudr Hana from one another Yichtavu Chelkon Lenasi they write over their Chelik each one should write over their portion to the Nasi and in that way it becomes Mutter again this is what the Ran already explained in the Mishnah and the Gemara continues at the two dots Rav Yehuda Omer Rav Yehuda says Ein Anshe Galil Trichin Lezakos Shekvar Kosuav and it says the people of the Galil, they don't need to do this Kenyan and write it over to the Nasi because their fathers already did it for them. And the Gemara says, Tanya, we learned in a Bryser of Yehuda Omer, of Yehuda says, Anshe Galil, Kantarin Hayu, Hayu Nodrin Hano, Zemize, the Anshe Galil, they would get angry with one another and they were constantly be, being Nodr Hano from one another. They were prohibiting one another to benefit from each other. And so therefore, Amdu Avoseim, so their fathers got up, Vakazvu Chalkein Lenasi, they wrote over their portion already to the Nasi. That's what it means in the Mishnah when it says their fathers already wrote over their portions. And that's why Rabbi Yehuda is saying in the Anshe Galil, this is no, this is no longer necessary. And the Gemara continues with the Mishnah, Hamudr Hana Mechaver, let's say a person is Mudr Hana from his friend, he cannot get benefits. Vien lo mayoch, he doesn't have what to eat, and now the friend wants to help him out and somehow give him something to eat. Knows no la'acher, so the friend can give the food to somebody else. Lashum matona as a gift. Vahalo mutter, but now the other person becomes mutter in it, because it's no longer the original person's, it was given over to someone else. And the Mishnah continues, Maisa Ba'echad Bebeis Choron. There was an incident with somebody in Beis Choron, Shaya Aviv, Noder Heimenu Hana. The father was not able to get benefit from him. There was a nether against it. Vaya Mesias Beno, and the son was, was marrying off his son. Vyomar Lechaveru, he said to his friend, Chatzer Usuuda, Nesunen Hinon Lefanecha, El Kidei Shayavo Abba Vyochli Mono Besuuda. He said, The courtyard and the meal, it's all get, being given over to you. But the reason why I'm giving it over to you is so that father can come and eat with us at the meal. In other words, trying to employ this idea that the Mishnah has that if you give it over to somebody else as a gift, so then it becomes mutter. Now the person who was the recipient of this gift, Amar, he said, Im shalihim, if it's truly mine, Harehem mukdashim lashamayim, I'm making everything hectish to heaven, I'm declaring everything hectish. Amar lay, so he said back to him, meaning the son said back to the recipient, Nasati l'chaz shalisha takdishim lashamayim, do you think I gave you my property in order that you should sanctify it for heaven? I gave it to you in order that my father should be able to participate. Amar lo, so the recipient said to him, Nasat ali, es shalcha ele shetei atavi avicha, Ochlin, Vishosin, Misrat and Zelazet, did you give me your property just so that you and your father can eat together and drink together and be friendly with the, with one another? Vihe Avon Tali Barosho, and the sin of violating the nether is now on his head, meaning on my head. I, the recipient, that sin should be on me that you guys are not keeping to the nether. Amru Chachamim, so the Chachamim said, Kol Matana, She'ena, She'im Yikdisha Tehei Mekudashas, any gift that's given, that is not given in the fashion that if the person were to sanctify it, then it would not be, uh, it would not be sanctified, Eina Matana. So then that's not considered a gift. In other words, the Chachamim are saying that in order for a gift to really be considered a gift, there has to at least be the theoretical possibility that the person, the recipient of the gift, can sanctify it, can make it hectish. And the Gemara says, Maisa Lister is the Mishnah bringing this incident in Beis Charon in order to contradict what it just said in the beginning of the Mishnah. The Mishnah said you're allowed to employ this tactic in order to give it over to someone as a gift. And then the Mishnah goes on with a story where the tactic does not work. And the Gemara says, There are words missing in the Mishnah, and it should be taught as follows. 
V'mochiach sofo al tchilaso. Let's say at the end, what happens at the end shows that at the beginning it wasn't a true gift. There's something that happens at the end that shows that the gift was not given with the full intention. So then also that it actually would be forbidden. Umaisanami bebeis choron. There was even an incident like this in beis choron. Be'echad the have a sofo mochiach al tchilaso, where there was an incident where there was a recipient, where what happened at the end showed that in the beginning it was not a real gift. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rava Rava says, Lo shanu ela do Amar lei vihinon lefonecha ela kadesha yavo abba. This mission over here, it's only talking when the person phrases it and says that the only reason I'm giving it to you is so that father can come. But let's say the phrase, he phrases it as follows, and he says to him, that it should be in front of you, that my father should come. In other words, he's not saying the only reason I'm giving it to you is so that my father should come, but he's saying it should be in front of you, and I would like that my father comes. So So then he's saying, if that's with your will, if you agree to that, so then the father should come. He's putting some control in the hands of the recipient in that case, and that would be fine. In that case, it would be considered a matana, and it would be effective. The Gemara says, Lishna Achrina, there's another version of what, of, of what Rava said. Lishna Achrina, Amrila, there's another version said as follows. Amar Rava, Rava says, Lo Don't say that the only reason it's prohibited is because he phrased it as Vihinan Lefanecha, as if that's the only reason he's giving it. But if he phrased it and he says it's in front of you that Abba should come, then it would be Mutter. Don't say that we'd be lenient with the different kind of phrasing. Rather, even if he said to him, He says, it's in front of you, let Abba come and eat. Usher, it is still going to be prohibited. My time was the reason, because his meal, the feast over here, meaning what happened in the end, where it's happening, it's being given over so the father can join, that proves again that it was not a true gift with the true intent. And we'll continue with this discussion in the next video. And Daf Memches Amud Beis.